Peter Kasim Hamza El Shanabi. How many people? Raise your hands. Not many. Abir was a 14-year-old girl living with her family about 50 miles south of Baghdad, trying to grow up as best she could in a country ravaged by war and violence. That is until March 12, 2006, when she was killed. On that night, five American soldiers, dressed all in black, burst into the home where Abir lived with her family. After spending the evening drinking whiskey mixed with energy drinks and playing cards, the soldiers allegedly decided to execute the crime they had been planning for weeks. The men took turns raping 14-year-old Abir before shooting her. In the next room, her mother, her father, and her five-year-old sister were executed. And when the men were done, apparently they dredged the bodies in kerosene and set them on fire. Then they went back to base and grilled up some chicken wings for dinner. It was months before their crime came to light. The cold-blooded murder of Abir and her family is a tragedy. But it's almost as great a tragedy when her story and all the other stories that are difficult to hear and difficult to accept are buried in the back of news pages, quickly shuffled off the nightly news by politicians and their handlers, desperate to change the subject or never told at all. Like many of you, like many Americans, I have felt frustrated and betrayed by the state of the mainstream media in this country. A media whose priorities seem out of step with their responsibilities. We need a media that strengthens democracy, not a media that strengthens the government. We need a enriches public discourse, not one that enriches corporations. When we talk about reforming the media, what we're really talking about is a creating a media, a media that is powerful, not a media that serves the interests of the powerful. A media that is so powerful that it can speak for the powerless, bear witness to those who are invisible in our world and memorialize those who will be forgotten. A truly powerful media is one that can stop a war, not start one. Ed Moyer said at this very conference last year, the quality of democracy and the quality of journalism are deeply entwined. I know that you know that when the media doesn't reflect the vibrant diversity of people on this planet, both the quality of journalism and the quality of our democracy suffer. Our shared goal of creating a truly progressive democratic media, vital, fair, investigative, and truth-telling, is ultimately unreachable if we do not address the persistent, pervasive inequalities that exist in media. Inequalities that exist even outside of mainstream media, even in the alternative and independent press. I'm sorry to say. Which is one of the reasons I wanted to be here. We've got to get a little estrogen up here. On yeah, this. yeah. As all of you here know to not know, the existence of the indep of independent media has been severely threatened. I know that lots of speakers during this conference have talked about it. We've seen a new concentration of media ownership. Heck, I I've been married to it. <laughs> elimination of federal regulations that promoted a diversity of viewpoints, this has weakened our country morally, physically, and spiritually. The free press has done a great deal to show how people of color have increasingly been marginalized as media monopolies grow, how ownership of television and radio stations by people of color is at its lowest level since the government began keeping track how a scant 13% of newspapers in this nation employ people of color in the same percentage as their readerships. 
and how issues affecting diverse communities have been underreported and ignored. But the media environment that is overwhelmingly white yes. is also overwhelmingly male. Yes. Yeah. Today, I hope to show you that a media that leaves women out is fundamentally, crucially flawed. Working yeah. at the Journalism and Women's Symposium, the Ms. Foundation at Common Ground, to make sure that women's experiences aren't left out of history's first draft. The Ms. Foundation has commissioned a reporter to gather women's stories of living through the storms and their long after. Because if you can't tell the whole story, because you can't tell the whole story when you leave out half the population. Right. Healthcare, social security, bankruptcy laws, education, minimum wage, war and peace, all these things and many more affect women differently than they do men. All issues are women's issues.